what is Alabama Code Section 32-5A-170 reasonable and prudent speed and what does it mean and what should I do if I am charged with a violation of that code section? The code section essentially states no person shall drive a vehicle at a speed greater than is reasonable and prudent under the conditions and a big and here having regard to the actual and potential hazard hazards then existing it goes on to state in great detail consistent with the previous statement every person shall drive at a safe and appropriate speed when approaching and crossing a few areas one is an intersection so if you're approaching an intersection this section applies or a railroad grade crossing when approaching or going around a curve, a hill crest, or when traveling upon a narrow or winding roadway, and when special hazard exists with respect to pedestrians or other traffic or by reason of weather or highway conditions. Let's talk a little bit about this section of the Alabama Code. When I read this section, and when I defend cases related to this section, the first thing that jumps out at me is there are quite a few words in there that are open for interpretation and may have a different meaning given the circumstances which clearly the statute applies to and also related to the person involved and what they may feel like is reasonable and prudent given the conditions. What makes a violation of the statute is if your actions, given the conditions, are not in line with one, acceptable standards, maybe two, the reasonable and, and prudent person standards, and three, the officer who cited you for the violation with his or her standards. So as you move through the statute, the first section covers speed so you cannot operate a vehicle at a speed that is greater than is reasonable and prudent under the conditions having regard not only for the actual hazards that are out there but the potential hazards there are many 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 potential hazards that could be out there on the road so the bottom line is if there is something going on in the road in front of you, the best thing to do is to slow down. The other issue that comes up with regard to this section is section 32-5A-171, which is the minimum and maximum limits speed limit section. It clearly indicates that municipalities cannot issue citations for a violation of that section on interstate highways unless their city or municipality or town exceeds 19,000 people. So many police officers that work for cities or towns, municipalities, will be out on the interstate and will write citations under 32-5A-170 or they will write them for some other violation such as reckless driving. So it's possible that you could be cited under this section when out on the interstate as well. The other issue that comes up in regards to this section of the code that you ought to pay attention to is the specific areas where this statute applies. Not only does it apply out on the, the general roadway, but they, they make a point to mention when you are approaching a hill crest, uh, going around a curve, crossing an intersection, or a rail, uh, railroad crossing. And it also applies for a narrow road or a special hazard exists, which presumably would be it is raining, it is snowing, it's icy, whatever the special hazard might be. And it could be that there's a large crowd of people out on the roadway, maybe leaving a, an event, and if an officer cites you under this section of the code, their argument may be 
that because there were pedestrians around and you were driving uh, maybe too fast for conditions, then they may cite you under this reasonable, reasonable and prudent speed section of the code. The bottom line that you need to remember is if there is any special hazard or if you're approaching an intersection, going over a hill crest, or if it's raining, snowing, then you need to back off the speed some to make sure that your conduct is reasonable and prudent given the circumstances and that your speed is as well. This section of the statute of the code is extremely, extremely subjective in an officer's viewpoint and many times, sometimes wrong and sometimes rightfully so, their opinion or their belief or their legal conclusion about what is reasonable and prudent under the circumstances can be very different from what I think or what you think or what other people out in the community think. So it's important for you to understand what the statute means and for you to understand how to operate within the statute to avoid a citation. If you're charged with a violation of section 32-5A-170, reasonable and prudent speed in Alabama, we can help you. I'm Joseph C. Kreps. I represent thousands of people in the state of Alabama for violations of traffic citations and traffic rules and the rules of the road in Alabama. We can help you. All you have to do is contact our office. You can reach us at 866-348-2889. All you have to do is call us to begin the conversation about your case. Again, you can reach us at 866-348-2889 or on the web at traffic ticket attorney in alabama.com or you can also reach us at alabama speeding ticket.com thank you very much my name is joseph kreps and i'm an alabama traffic defense attorney and we can help you with your violation of section 32-5a-170 reasonable and prudent speed in alabama all you have to do is call our office to begin the conversation you can reach us at 866 348-2889. We have represented thousands of people who have been charged with traffic offenses in the state of Alabama, and we can help you. All you have to do is call us to begin the conversation. 866-348-2889. You can also reach us on the web at traffic ticket attorney in alabama.com or alabama speeding ticket.com. Thank you very much.